Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode with me. Today we're talking about vintage items. Um, but first, I wanted to give you the answer to the trivia question that I gave you in my last video on dresses. That question was, in 2023, who was the best dressed celebrity with the most extravagant, expensive, beautiful dress in all of the Oscars? Well, a quick Google search probably would have told you, but I'll tell you as well. It appears it was Jennifer Lawrence wearing a Christian Dior. She paid $4 million for this dress. I can only imagine. So anyway, that is the answer to the trivial question for today. Um, I'll have a joke for you at the end of this one, so you'll love it. You'll want to hang around for that. All right, well, let's talk about some vintage items today. Vintage items, I will be honest with you, are extremely tricky to me, um, and I'm still learning a lot about them with everything else. Vintage, though, and just kind of dabbling in just to get a feel for it, to see you know what my resale rate is on that. Um, Vintage can be tricky sometimes identifying. There's tons and tons of articles and videos online on how to find vintage items. And I encourage you, if you have any interest in reselling vintage items, to look at some of those other resources. Because what I'm going to tell you is just, again, I'm not an expert. These are just some of the things that I have found and some of the challenges that I'm working through trying to find my niche in um, what I do want to focus on as far as my reselling goes. I have been able to sell vintage in the past, surprisingly more than I thought. Have I labeled it vintage correctly? All of it? Well, the stuff that I sold, yes. I think that I did correctly label it vintage, but I think perhaps there were some other items that I may have had along the way that were truly vintage items and I just didn't label them as such because I didn't have any concrete proof or I didn't know enough about vintage products to feel comfortable saying that it was. I want to be very honest and very transparent in all of my descriptions. I never want to have an item not as described. So I always err on the side of caution. If I'm ever unsure, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm not even going to say it. Um, but one thing I've learned about vintage items is there's always exceptions to the rule. Vintage, based on my research, is any item that's over 20 years old. And again, there's some exceptions to that, but for the most part, anything over 20 years is considered vintage. And let's also talk about things to consider if you want to buy vintage items for the purpose of reselling. What is the resale value of the item? I think there's a lot of variations in that. Maybe some nostalgic 1970s, 1980s, pristine condition concert t-shirts you might actually do fairly well on. Whereas, you know, a vintage sports jacket from the same era might not do so well. So there's a lot of variations. You need to figure out what is going to be worth your time and your effort. You need to determine how can I source these items. If I want to focus on vintage, where can I get them on an ongoing, regular basis? Or maybe you just want to throw a few in here and there with your other listings, whether you're selling clothing or otherwise. But you also have to take into consideration, once you source it, what's the overall condition of that particular item? Is it tattered and torn and no one's going to pay anything for it? Or is it one of those eclectic, you know, deadhead t-shirts from long ago that you know it might have a hole under the arm, but I think I can still sell it. So those are decisions you're gonna to have to make on your own and determine based on your market and your selling experience and the demographic of people in which you primarily sell to, how much you want to dabble in the world of vintage. It's just something that I am learning about and I am trying to just get an understanding of it. I don't buy a lot of vintage pieces. But I do throw it out there from time to time just to see what happens and that I have actually sold more than I thought. I've sold items that I was questionable if I was ever going to sell them at all. They've actually sold. So that was kind of cool. And then I have items where I've probably had for too long and I think it, it's about time that I might need to purge those from my inventory because they're just taking up space and they're not moving for me. And I'm very new to the reselling business so a lot of what I'm doing again, is not only trial and error, but it's trying to determine what's going to work for me and my business model and my profile, the image, so to speak, that I want to put out there online. Do I want to be 
um, in a particular niche or do I just want to stick with the mall brands or do I want to stick with dresses whatever it might be I'm still trying to test those waters out and um, see what might work best for us and our business model I in 2023 have dead so it's been about six months have dedicated full-time to this reselling business so even though we were reselling last year in 2022 all of us were doing it on a part-time basis and it was kind of hit or miss how much attention we could give it we did see enough success to say hey you know what maybe we can grow a business off of this but with that being said this last six months is really the time where I've honed in on a lot of different things in terms of you know listings um, making sure I have those keywords testing the waters again with the vintage to see is it something that I even want to take the time to do or not but through it all I've learned a lot whether I decide to continue to do vintage or not remains to be seen but I have learned so what I've learned I'm happy to share with you so we're going to talk about some vintage items that I've recently acquired I will do my best to educate you on what I have found to lead me to believe these items are in fact vintage I am certainly as always gonna have a little PowerPoint or a little presentation sheet that I'm going to make sure that I include in each of these videos so you can refer back to if you have an interest in doing that how can I identify vintage well there's a list of 10 things I'm about to give you and as a roll of thumb what I have found is things that are made in the USA that are over 20 years old constitutes as vintage items and I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek because I have found more modern current items that have been made in the USA another thing if it was made in the USA very often they're going to have union labels and I'm going to show you what all of that looks like here in a few moments but just to kind of give you a quick overview of why I think these particular items are vintage vintage is going to key in on these couple of components so you have made in the USA you have union tags and also style I'm a product of the 80s I love the 80s I mean you have to admit 80s had a particular style to it I wish I could go back it was awesome things like shoulder pads or really really tapered legs or you have the the cardigan look again with shoulder pads and then of course you have the 70s if you're able to find anything from the 70s you know the whole hippie look um, tie-dye those vintage pieces I haven't ran across a lot of 70s late 70s perhaps I find a lot of 80s things so I look at the style and me as I said being a product of the 80 I can kind of hone in on that just a bit another thing you look for when it comes to tags are copyright dates are there any copyright dates? And that's a rule of thumb because I have found some examples of you know Christopher and Banks for example that have copyright tags and dates on them even though it might be copyrighted doesn't necessarily mean it's vintage you have to have more than one reason to believe an item is vintage in my opinion for you to state that it's vintage another thing is rebranded again me being a product of the 80s guest jeans were huge I think anyone that lived in the 80s had a pair of guest jeans or at least coveted a pair of guest jeans but I've noticed through the years their branding label has changed right along with them so even though you can get guests um, in modern day the true vintage guess goes way back to the 80s and if I can recollect it's the triangle with the question mark so there are still brands that are out and available today that are current yet still have maybe um, they've rebranded themselves and there are some still vintage items out there so look for those and be able to identify the difference between them serial numbers lot numbers a lot of times you'll find on these items you can look those up again it comes down to how much time and research do you want to take out of your valuable day to research that information but you can look for those items those lot numbers and serial numbers and do your best to research and find out if it's vintage or not check the seam finishes I've heard this a lot on t-shirts particularly look for single stitching that sort of thing and if we're talking about sourcing that takes a lot of time because you've literally got to go through thumb through every single 
t-shirt. Even if you think it's possibly vintage, take Star Wars for an example. Star Wars was big in the 80s, so there's a ton of Star Wars t-shirts, but you're seeing that circling back and they might not necessarily be vintage. So if I wanted to find a vintage Star Wars t-shirt, I would literally have to look at the seam, how it was finished. Is it something that on my little mental tally sheet is this one more check mark towards yes this possibly could be vintage so you could look at that fabric content is another one today's world were full of synthetic fibers back in the day and you saw a lot more silks and wool and true fabric materials as opposed to the acrylics and the synthetic material so that is also something that you want to um, take a look at not one of these things is ding 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 I have a vintage item no I would caution you to have maybe one or two possibly even three or four of those items off my check mark okay USA has a union brand I recognize this label as being from the 80s so it's vintage and hey I got lucky it's a single stitch so that gives me you know three to four tick marks so to speak that I can confidently say okay I can label this as vintage and feel good about it and not feel that I'm deceiving anyone because that's not our our purpose and our goal I, I don't want to guess and I'm more about quality in my listings as quantity I know there's people out there that want to just get as many listings out as possible completely agree with that that's the only way to build your store but I want to be very forthright communicating my product as transparently as possible. So when it comes to vintage, that's why I say I'm still learning and I don't buy a lot of it because I want to be sure. What we'll do next is I have some pieces behind me that we'll kind of look at and I will maybe tell you why I think they're likely vintage. Let me know if I'm wrong. I'm learning and I value any input that you have that might educate me because I am not here to profess I'm the expert. I'm new. This is what I'm learning and I'm going to share with you my journey as we go along through this process and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, benefit each other to some degree. So hang tight. I'm going to get some clothing queued up and we're going to take a closer look at those tags. Thanks guys. Okay, well, we're going to start with women's business suit. Why did I choose these particular suits other than they look and they appear vintage to me? I'm going to show you a couple of indicators that I have found that lead me to believe they truly are. We're going to look at tags. Sometimes something as simple as a tag can give you a pretty good indication if it is vintage or not. If you just take a look at that, you would agree it's probably old school. Oftentimes, and I'm not sure, well this one unfortunately does not. It looks like it had a tag at one point in time. Don't really know fabric content of this because that particular tag was trimmed out. But what I can tell you is this one I would base off of the tag because clearly it's this thick, thick paper tag. And I can tell the stitching. It's not necessarily a single stitch, but I would look at dial of it. I think I would be confident in saying this particular piece was vintage, although I can only truly confirm based on the tag alone, and we know that's not always 100%. This particular suit, not only will it have kind of an old school tag, and I don't know if you know this, I had to learn the hard way, but usually if you're lucky, on the inner pocket, you can find an, a little tag, and on this one, might be upside down, but it's going to say Union Made. So it has the shoulder pads I can feel. I don't see materials tag on this, but it does have the union. So I do with the union tag. I don't feel that I have to guess quite as much if I can truly say it's union made because I know United States, as far as union textile, they don't do a whole lot of it in this day and age. So these particular suit items, I would still probably list as vintage. I haven't fully dissected the skirt yet. I might be able to find um, identifiers in there, but that tag was definitely 20 years old. It's what, 2023 now? I mean, if you think about it, that's like the 2000s. I would probably date that as late 90s. So that still constitutes vintage, but I think I would still do vintage for these based on the labeling for sure this one. So let's take a look at a couple of other pieces and let me know what you think. Okay, what I have here are a couple more items. One thing with vintage that I have learned, they take a lot of time. You need to put some TLC in them. Oftentimes you're going to have the little pilling 
or you're gonna have to for sure at the very least lint roll it I haven't done these to these particular pieces yet I'm still gonna show them to you because I think they are good examples of what we're talking about today this skirt in particular it has a older tag on it if you can see that and this one was in fact made in the United States so it does state USA in it I'm trying to see look at the back side of it I found was pretty interesting you can just tell it says dry clean only and it does give me a lot number looking at this tag I feel pretty confident a vintage piece have to research it a little bit maybe to find out what era or decade but I think for sure it is at least 20 years old so this is one that I would chalk up as vintage this next dress I found particularly interesting now I'm gonna take it off the hanger to show you in a little bit more detail but check this out you have a snap then you have velcro and another snap now this is interesting to me because I kind of think that velcro was put there intentionally I don't think that's aftermarket because of how it closes you've got the one button here and the snap and the button down here and again a snap well that's still gonna leave a little gaping hole for anyone wearing this so I kind of think that this is you know legit manufacturer placed product which is interesting to me because I've not actually seen that before and another thing that I find interesting about this particular garment the labeling the, the tag on it it's clearly old school not something you see very often this these days has a lot number made in the USA hand wash only I have found that a lot USA vintage is very often hand wash and it is going to have a union label once again clearly it has shoulder pads so this is something if I was a draft a listing for this particular item these are the things that I would include I would include you know the shoulder pads this I think I would call 80s early 90s maybe Again, it depends on how much time you want to take to research it. And before I would label it as anything, I would take the time to do that. But just taking a look at it here and from my memory, I think this certainly could be, at the very least, a 90s piece. And I would document the interesting closure that it has here. And I would also, for sure, talk about the shoulder pads, the Made in the USA, um, I always try and give people a heads up how to wash it because if everything I buy is dry clean only, that could get expensive. So I like people to know ahead of time, manufacturer recommended way of cleaning this item. So I wanted to make sure I showed you this piece because I found it interesting for a number of reasons. That and it has a skirt with it. I find often that um, pieces that are complete, you know, you have the full set sell better for me because you have the whole outfit right there so this is a very interesting um, piece that I will do a little bit more research on but I will likely end up labeling it as vintage so let's take a peek at a couple more items and we'll make a determination what we think we're going to do with those okay so now these little gems I'd like to share with you remember when we talked about labels and branding these I can tell again because I am of a particular decade these jeans I would confidently say are vintage not only are they not manufactured like this any longer in the zipper I noticed it does have a made in the USA tag don't think that I saw a union insignia I did not but these I know were made in the USA the label does tell me that and the fact that I owned a pair in like 1980 I'm going to say 1980-ish. I feel comfortable calling these vintage. I don't know of too many denim manufacturers here in the United States anymore. So this is one that I would likely list as vintage. These ones are a nice pair of pleated pants. The reason why I chose these is because they're Bugle Boy. My husband back in the day absolutely loved Bugle Boy. They did go out of business in 1993, so we're right there at about that vintage era. I will have to look at serial numbers on these particular pants to find out when they were made. But I do know Bugle Boy went out of business. So this is a brand you're not going to find too much anymore unless they 
decide to revamp it for whatever reason. To my knowledge, they have not done that yet, much to my husband's dismay. Like I said, he really loved Bugle Boy clothing. This particular one, I don't know where it was made. I have my size tags. Let's see if I can find any other indicators on these real quick. It does have a tag, and this one was made in Cambodia an RN number. Don't really see any other like serial numbers per se, so I'm gonna have to research this one just a bit. But if you're familiar with a particular brand, maybe it was one that you wore back in the day, and you're interested in figuring out if it's vintage, it might be a piece you might wanna pick up if you can source it at a reasonable price and if you're willing to take the risk. I thought I could take a risk on these being that it's 2023. I don't know. This is a questionable one. What I find um, a lot of vintage material happens to come in this form. You can find a lot of suit jackets out there, particularly for men, that are vintage. Because men just hang on to their clothing and they keep it forever and ever and ever and ever. This particular one is a really nice um, all green one. And whoever labeled this was super kind because they did leave the label on. Um, where I purchased it. It just says 44R. Tells me the size. What I've also found with these jackets is there's a lot more measurements that go into them. Not only do you do sleeve length, you do the overall length, you do the chest, you also do, I, because I've had a lot of people ask, shoulder to shoulder. So one extra measurement usually goes into these suit jackets for me when I am um, processing them and trying to get as much information as I can in the listing so that I don't have questions, particularly repetitive questions. Now, why did I choose this one? Well, I'm looking for any indicators of labels. I do have them. It is made in the USA. I was trying to look at the material content. Doesn't actually tell me on this one, which is unfortunate because, you know, I really like to include that information, especially on suit jackets. But the fact that it was made in the USA, the style, this is one that I would certainly do a little bit more research on before I would officially label it vintage, but I think I could probably get away with it and feel somewhat confidently. Really nice jacket. It was a good find. Even if I don't, label it as vintage. I think this is one that will sell for me regardless, just because it is very nice. It's a good neutral color, um, good size. I have this little gem over here. What is interesting about this one is, I think this one was made in Slovakia. That and it's silk and it's wool. This probably could be vintage because material content but where it was made looking at it it's not terribly old vintage i could probably convince myself i know this whole video is on vintage but i want to be so so sure before i say something that is not so these are my dilemmas that as i'm outsourcing looking for merchandise especially that that i'm super unfamiliar with and i want to learn about again i just pick them up and i will do a little bit more legwork to determine are they vintage how am i going to label it i would say a lot of what i showed you today i would feel com comfortable calling it vintage i claim to be no real professional in this area and i would appreciate any comment or feedback that you might have in this realm of vintage clothing hey guys thanks for hanging out with me again today i do appreciate it here's that joke that i promised you what did the mommy light bulb say to the baby light bulb i love you watts and watts thanks guys have a good day okay first up i have here are some women's business suits these i did decide to get because it seems if I can sell a complete item or outfit rather, um, skip. Radio clip number three. Okay, so what I have queued up here are some women's vintage suit dresses that I have here. Actually, it's a yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do this one more time. One more. 